Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to discuss the Appian release notes 24.4. So recently Appian has released its new features as part of 24.4. So we are going to see what the changes one by one like what are those new changes. Okay, so the very first change that we are going to discuss is database access is back. I'm not sure whether it is for all the users or not. But when I try to log in in my community, I can see here you can go to the cloud database and you can see the data database so the uh, the database feature is once again back which is going to be really helpful for everyone we can directly uh, interact with our database we don't have to just rely on the records part so now database is back so once again we can take the help from the database as well so this has really been a good news for everyone that database access is back now moving on to the next feature that is that related to the process models so in the process model a new feature called auto scale has been uh, has been introduced here although i can't find the auto scale feature in the process model yet maybe it has not been released across the globe for some reasons it might get released sometime later as well so let me know if you have that auto scale feature in the process model properties or not so here only most probably it will be present here so that is not yet present for me now moving on to the start process smart service see start process smart service was mainly designed for the async activity and it has an uh, important task that is so load balancing it used to do in the backend now it can even run the synchronous process as well it can be run as a synchronous process as well which is really a great addition let's try to see it in action how does it work so let's say that this is a process model and it has a user input task here so obviously it is a attended activity here now when you go to the start process smart service i have tried to call that process model here so go to properties and go to the setup tab now in the setup tab you can see the process model so you can refer this ma custom from here and we can run it synchronous or asynchronous as well let's try to run it asynchronous how does it work so if you try to debug this process model here and see let's debug it so once you debug it what happens uh, means normal async behavior process started and completed without even waiting for this user input task to complete but now from now onwards you can if you run it synchronously what will happen in that case is that now it will wait for that user input task to get completed so now we can run it as a synchronous process as well okay so here you can see it is now running as a synchronous activity it will not complete until we go and complete that user input form then only it is going to complete at all so this is a really good addition in the start process feature and one more thing is there when you go in the setup tab earlier you can only refer the process model through uh, either an id you can either go and select a process model or you can select the id of process model. now you can directly refer with the help of this uh, custom picker as well so just you just have to select any process model and just select it from the picker only directly pick any process model you want okay so which is a good good addition so that was about the process model part here as well you can see in the screenshot like two features have been added here now see here in the test cases so there has been really a very good addition in the test case this time so what happened let's say that i have an expression rule to calculate the area of the circle here this is a formula 3.14 into pi r square means pi r square is there now earlier what was there was if you have test case you have to come and you have to load a particular test case here just click on a test case load a test case and then you can check that value here now what has been added that if you have a test case every test case will show in a drop down here just select for any value and you can just click on test rule so this is really good for the unit testing of the expressions here even someone who is from the qa background they can easily come and test all the test cases one by one and they will be able to edit that particular input as well directly from here as well so it, it is a really good addition that has been come up here as part of this change the next important thing are present in the interfaces part here so a new component has been added in the interface so see with every update we are excited that what new interface component appian is trying to add because interface is what appian selling point because they say that we have very good interfaces we can design quickly so see this time they have added card group layout earlier in if you want to add a card group layout something like this you have to add a custom coding for that so that they say you have to 
assume that this is a number of rows this is columns and then it will work but now see you can you just have to use this particular component and in that add a loop and just add all the cards that you want and then that's it done so this component will does it all for you uh, okay and it is responsive as well okay so that has been added as part of this new change here which is really good now moving on to the next interface change that is a new heading component has been added a rich text editor has now been removed so this is a new heading component is there so how does it work is that let's go to the design mode and in this heading component you can see that you can add a text you can change the size of the heading component here okay you can change the font of weight as well see here this changes here you can change the colors as well if you want to make it secondary standard color whatever you want you can make it and general alignment and margin features have been added and even you can add links as well any type of link that appian supports everything can be added here so this is a really good addition after that uh, the new change is that style text editor now supports tables as well but in order to enable the table feature what you have to do here is that you have to go in the style text editor and you have to select allowed formats so it has multiple allowed formats here here you have to select table and now that particular table component can also load here so either you create a table from a scratch for example name is there and then let's say that age is there okay and then name is let's say that John is let's say 23 you want a new column here so what you have to do for that is insert a new row below that's it so you can insert it either you do it through this or if you have a table let's say this one copy this and whatever the RI it is storing just paste this here and click on test so once you click on test that table will also load so earlier we were using that Vudum rich text plugin but now Appian is also catching up but the speed is a bit slow because only in a quarter only it will get update so we, let's wait for the next quarter what new update style text editor gets and even there is update or not so that's the dependency but anyway it is getting better day by day only now the next feature that has come up here is in the read only grids so let's say that this is a grid here okay new feature what has been done here is that load data async has been come up here what this does is that if you click on test interface and click on test see here what will happen so when it the data loads you can see that you know like for one or two seconds it was just showing that it is kind of loading effect it just try to show so this you used to so that if you have a huge grid or you have a custom grid and the data is there so in that you can enable the data async so your faster component will load first and the grid will load after some time so one or two seconds of delay is there which is a really good feature that has been added here one of more feature has been added in the read only grid is that that see we have seen that a style text and export when export when parameter is there so how does it work go to this one see earlier when we want to export the data what we have to do whatever the data that you want to export it here whatever is showing in the grid everything will get exported so now there is a change here so what is the change if you go in the read only grid a columns let's say a salary column is there in that export when parameter is added and it is set to false what does it mean is that let's say that i want to export the data but i don't want to export the salary i want to show to the user but i don't want to export it what i have to do just click on export this one and when you click on export and see salary is not present so this we cannot no matter how much custom or whatever you do it was not achievable earlier but now we can achieve this feature so this is a really good addition in the uh, read only part that async feature and this export feature in the record changes moving to the record record is part of now data fabric so we can assume that every time it will get new updates in the records so the very first compares in the data model in the records you can see that you can now check the name of your data source as well so that schema change is there it is already present in the database part as well so in the database you can see here my record is connected to w0432 this is schema and you can see that schema name as well so that has been the very first change like you can even see the name of your schema here as well this means now shows the name as well so that is good earlier we have to 
window you know like search like which scheme it belongs to now in the sync filters when you click on add filters here so you can see a kind of similar kind of ui which is already present in sync options as well I means schedule full sync skip data at high volumes even you can add filters with relationship as well as of now there is no relationship so it is not able to add it here and we can even test our filters as well so all these things has been added as part of the uh, sync filters uh, new changes now the next change is that in the sync options so what are the options in sync let's see that now in the sync option you can see here there is skip field things and all these things were present now there is one more checkbox that is recover smart service things so what does this feature does is that when your smart service fails to sync the record this particular checkbox will keep your data synced so you don't have to worry that uh, uh, your record might not be unavailable due to a failed sync attempt due, uh, from a smart service. Now moving on to the next feature that is duplicate security rules. So if you go in the record label security, you can duplicate a security rule as well. So here are the security rules. Let's say that I have few security rules configured. So here I can edit it and it can, I can even copy this. If you click on copy, let's say that I want to copy and I want to just add some more group here. Okay, one more admin group I want to add. So with new changes, you can even copy and create a new rule easily here. So let's say that this admin is there and you can just click on create and this new rule will get created with this new and new changes as well. So that's what you can do here as well in the record level security. Now the next feature is that you can subscribe to a record event list history as well to get the email updates. Okay, so that has been added here. So that was the major changes that we have seen as part of the uh, release 24.4. So there are other changes as well which are not that much developer centric but for that you can refer the uh, release notes in the documentation but I have tried to cover all the major changes here. Okay, so you can also just try to go through the changes one by one and if your environment is on the latest upgrade you can you, you start utilizing these new features as well. Okay, and one more changes that is part of admin that I wanted to discuss that is, is uh, let's say that earlier what we used to do is that we can we can deploy and approve with the same account let's say that i have a few change i can deploy with my account and i can go and uh, approve with this one so but now a new group has been added reviewer kind of thing so if you are part of this group then only you can approve the changes and see requester and reviewer must be different so they are different users are present there so you one user can't be in both the group request and reviewer i guess this kind of things might be present there we don't have the admin access to test it but this is a really good change because earlier also it was not a good practice that the user who is trying to deploy and they are only approving it okay so that was not even a good practice back then but now it has been controlled from the admin con con admin console directly so that is a really good addition here so these are the wrap up of all the major changes that has been done as part of this release notes appin is set to start newer with really a, some good features out there and one of the best thing was that database access is back so i used to get a lot of question that why there is no database uh, where is database so now that database access is back so you can go and explore the database once again like usual okay so that's the wrap up for now guys okay explore these features complete the course in the appian academy as well for the release notes so that was all for now thank you